Yeah, now it works. Now it's fine. All right, so with uh, Flexi DX, uh, you're showing flexible displays. Yes. Yeah. Actually, what uh, Flexi this is is a uh, European project in which an, uh, several companies yeah. work together to develop flexible display technology. So we develop uh, the technology to make several display types yeah. flexible. And the first one uh, we have is the uh, e-book uh, foil, foils. Yeah. Uh, what you see here is the result of the cooperation together with several companies. Yeah. Uh, you see here a uh, flexible uh, electrophoretic uh, display, yeah. which is really operational. So we control and you see that the information is changing and it is really, really... Yeah. Is it the first time you show it? Uh, this is the first time uh, we show... Yeah, I think it's the first time we officially show it. Yeah. At IFA? Yeah. yeah, at IFA for sure, uh, IFA for um, sure. Uh, but I'm not uh, familiar yeah. with all the okay. places where But there was some talk about it before? Or you um, had some... You, you had a, uh, Philips had another kind of flexible display they were showing at some point. Was yes. it a different kind? Yeah, or? Uh, there, there are, we have uh, within Philips we have several yeah. uh, flexible uh, technologies. Another technology developed, uh, which originated from Philips, yeah. that's the uh, polymer vision uh, technology. Oh, yeah. And that's a technology which uses basically organic transistors yeah. as control electronics and also has an e-ink e foil on top yeah. of it to uh, show the presentation. So, so the is this one e-ink or also? Or? This is also e-ink, yeah. but this is a uh, display with an active matrix backplane. Right. So what we uh, basically do here, this can be fabricated in a uh, standard TFT factory and oh. the operators don't even know that they're working on flexible uh, displays. Whoa. And that means that you can use all the installed base for LCDs, uh, which means that uh, it's uh, relatively cheap to introduce this. All right. And with the technology we yeah. got it licensed to yeah. a uh, Taiwanese company. You see here one of their prototypes really made in their factory. Yeah. And by the end of the year, they hope to be in production with flexible displays, e-book. E by the end of the year, this kind of flexible e-book. Yes, by the end but of the year. So does it work? At, that at the, as the the display yeah. itself still has to somebody still has to manufacture it yeah. in a complete e-book as a real yeah. application. Does it work in a way that you have to have something connected around it like this on those sides? You have to connect it. Uh, Which part? On this side. So on basically, this, side? this is the side where you connect it. Yeah. And here you put some other things on it, so the other control electronics, yeah. and then you can make the e-book. Just one, one side, that's it? Yeah. And uh, so how, how flexible is it? Can you uh, roll it around or...? Uh, this one, uh, you can't really roll around. It is flexible yeah. like, a, like a scene here. Yeah. But it's only like that. Yeah. The uh, polymer vision technology is yeah. really capable of uh, rolling. But yeah. unfortunately we cannot show it here yeah. because the, mock the, the, uh, yeah. the devices never came uh, to us. So does that mean that if it's flexible it's more uh, resistant to harsh, uh, or yes. is that something to do with that? That would be in the uh, first application, yeah. uh, not using glass anymore, uh, yeah. will help for the liability of the e-books. Yeah. Because one of the problems with e-books is that people use it as a book, they drop it and then the glass will break and making it flexible. Yeah. Even in a rigid form, it won't break yeah. anymore. Will it, will it be yeah. as readable as any other kind of e-paper? Yes. Yeah. The same it will resolution. Be exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. The resolution is just as adjustable as a uh, standard e-book, and uh, the e-book we, uh, the company yeah. IREX is uh, showing, has a 160 e, uh, DPI uh, reso nice. uh, resolution. So that's quite good. Nice. And uh, the color ones? Yeah, what we show here is also, we were not working only on one uh, flexible technology, we were also working on uh, several others. Uh, one of them is an uh, OLED. The disadvantage of the uh, e paper like, e -paper -like uh, displays is that they are not, as, um, they cannot show video. Okay. And uh, also with colors is a bit more complicated. To really have a nice, flexible, video capable display yeah. you need OLEDs. And what we show here is uh, several OLEDs still in a glass uh, package. And uh, you see all the colors available. And what you also can do with the OLEDs is really make it transparent. Transparent. Right. So you can really look through it. If the light is on, you cannot yeah. look through it. If the light is off, you can really look through it. Because the, the flexible display 
color display, will that be as good as any other OLED display? It will be uh, as good as an, uh, any other OLED displays, yeah. and OLED displays itself are better as a uh, standard LCD displays or even plasma yeah. displays. Yeah, so the resolution, everything will be the same? They should be the same. Yeah. yeah. All right, and uh, a normal OLED, is that also possible to make it transparent? Or is it just this one that's very special? Yeah, basically, yeah, this, of course it's very special, yeah. but you can use it for, uh, this is a standard OLED. Yeah, is so that also how it works, the OLED, it can be transparent or? The OLED, the materials themselves are basically transparent. Yeah. And the only thing you do differently is uh, you have both electrodes transparent, and yeah. in a standard OLED, usually only one is uh, transparent. All right. Um, but that's not an, uh, a big issue, you can do that. All right. Can we see uh, the mock-up you have over there? We have several mock-ups. What you see here, this is yeah. an uh, GPS meant for a yeah. uh, uh, bike. All right. So, uh, just like I said before, the electrophoretic displays are relatively slow. Yeah. So if you would use a GPS with that kind of a uh, foil, in a car you cannot do that because the car is moving too fast. Okay. But the bike isn't. So then the refresh rate is okay, and you can still use it as a sensible, good DPS. And right. with this technology, you can also roll it, and you can yeah. really use it outside. Because the refresh rate is about one a second, or? It's about one second. One second, exactly. yeah. And uh, that's fast enough, uh, fast enough on a bike, yeah. and it would not be fast enough on a car. Okay. And since this is quite stable, yeah. you can really use that. Can we go over to uh, the, the IREX? Because is that also something that uh, Philips and everybody has been working on? Um, Some of the yeah, same the, the basic technology from IREX yeah. has been developed uh, by Philips, but yeah. uh, has been taken further by some uh, people, former Philips employees, yeah. who started the company by themselves. The e-ink, is the, that the one? The uh, e-ink is the files they use, yeah. but the e-book technology is uh, originating from uh, Philips. All right. Um, we have here. Oh, oh, that's oh, the one. Yes. They're using it. That's okay, I'll make a break. So this is an, another, another mock-up. Yeah, this is also again another mock-up. So this would yeah. be an OLED uh, display, yeah. in which you have a display in here. You have a video camera, and then you yeah. can take pictures while you're uh, skiing or while you're uh, moving. All right. And you can also show it later on. All right. And you can go forward and backwards. Okay, all right.